Hi, everybody. In this segment, we're going to talk about the absolute value function. Now, this is something that many people have seen before, uh, but they may not really know exactly what it is. Um, the absolute value function is simply a question um, that says, how far is whatever is in these bars from zero? What is the magnitude? And the, the kind of short version of how the absolute value works is pe many people will say, well, it, it turns your number positive. The absolute value of eight is eight. The absolute value of negative four is positive four and so forth. But what we're really doing is we're answering this question. If you have a number line and you put in negative four on that number line, how far is this from zero? You know, if you have eight over here, how far is eight? You know, that's uh, eight from zero. Um, so when we talk about absolute, absolute value at the very basic level, we're just asking how far is this number away from zero? By absolute, we mean what is the, what is the size of the distance that we are from zero? And that's why if you have the absolute value of negative six, it's six, and the absolute value of six is also six because on the number line, negative six and positive six are both the same distance from zero, here's zero, here's six, here's negative six, this distance and this distance are the same. So let's think a little bit more about this and, and consider the graph of the absolute value function. I'm gonna just turn this over. Um, let's just plot some points to kind of get a, a feel for what the graph should look like. Here's the absolute value of X. Uh, we'll draw a little graph. Now, if I put in the number, say we put in the number one, for the absolute value, uh, the absolute value of one is gonna be one. It's gonna be right there. And if I put in the number two into the absolute value right here, we're gonna get two. And if I put in three to the absolute value, the absolute value of three is three. And so we're gonna have something like this. If I put in zero, the absolute value of zero is zero, and now if we go over to negative one, the absolute value of negative one is positive one. If I put in negative two, the absolute value of negative two is positive two. And we end up with this V shape. It's a perfect little V shape. My graph is kind of haphazardly drawn, but you get a V shape just like this. And um, so the way that you would write you could write an equation for these two lines uh, without using the absolute value is by considering that when I'm at, from zero to the right, I have this linear equation. And then from zero to the left, I have a, a different linear equation. So on this side, notice the slope, down one over one, down one over one. Here my slope is negative one. And here my slope up one over one, up one over one is positive one. And for both of them, the y-intercept is zero. So if you wanna kind of think about y equals mx plus b for an equation, this line is y equals negative one x plus zero. And this side is positive one x plus zero. And you can actually use what's called a piecewise function to describe this absolute value and the way it works I have a different video on piecewise functions if you need some help with that. But the piecewise function basically considers a condition and then tells you what the equation is going to be for that condition. The first condition is x is below zero. The second one is x is equal to zero. And the third one is x is bigger than zero. So when x is less than zero, that's this part right here. And when x is less than zero, the equation is minus 1x plus zero. And then when x is exactly equal to zero, then y is zero. And then if x is bigger than zero, we're looking at this section over here, the y equals positive one x plus zero like that. So this guy and this guy are the exact same thing. This is written with an absolute value and this is written as a piecewise function. They describe the exact same curve. Something to kind of note here, see how this is kind of a sharp turn when you have a sharp turn, you cannot describe uh, a function 
as like a single linear equation or a single quadratic or, or whatever. It really, you really need a piecewise function to describe this section on this side and then this section on this side afterwards. Um, if you have an absolute value function, just like any other kind of function, you can translate it all over the, the graph. So let's kind of look at that last. Uh, I just showed you that if you have y equals the absolute value of x, it looks kind of like this, just a V-shape with the vertex at zero, zero. Um, if you have the absolute value of x minus two, that is a shift right two because the minus means right and it's inside the function. So we're gonna have the, the vertex there and it looks kind of like this now. And if you had y equals the absolute value of x plus three minus one, this would be left three and uh, down one. And this is just a translation, just like it would be for any other function. I have a video about translations up. You can look at that if you need some help with that. Left three down one, your V shape is right here. And it looks like that kind of. So that's a, that'll get you started with absolute value functions. The thing to remember is absolute value is just a question. How far is what I'm looking at from zero? Thanks.